The hated homeschooling is over for parents and students in Victoria and New South Wales and students in the ACT are slowly returning to classrooms too. Children and young people are personally at little risk of serious illness from COVID, but they have paid a high price to protect older Australians. As Elias Cluel reports, experts have a reassuring message for parents concerned about COVID outbreaks in schools. Liam, are you up? Yeah. Good boy. What do you want for breakfast? <laughs> for the first time in 13 weeks, it's back to school time for Year 6 student Liam Walsh. No, it's not for you, Diesel. His mother, Mandy, is looking forward to seeing him out of the house. Yes, I am very excited about the kids going back to school. It has been a long haul, um, sort of each week, thinking about, is this the last week? Is this the last week? Words. Who, when, where, how, why, explain. I think we're all a little concerned because it's all the unknown. Hearing that the... Uh, vaccination rate um, of adults will protect our children who aren't vaccinated is quite comforting. All students in New South Wales and Victoria are now back at school after both states staggered the reopening. We completely re-timetabled our school um, and our rooming and we've also had some air purifiers delivered over the weekend and they'll be installed today. We've made modifications to the teaching teams so that, uh, so that groups of students stay with those teachers even during recess and lunch time. They've done so much to keep us like separated with the staggered entry times and different playgrounds. Our schools are complex organisations. In some schools we have up to 2,000 people on site trying to manage the timetabling as such, when you're trying also to maintain safe distancing between students and teachers, is not easy. These matters are often overlooked or certainly underestimated by policymakers. But Teachers Federation President Angelo Gavrilados says while some schools are prepared, he believes the New South Wales government isn't doing enough to improve ventilation. With respect to the ventilation work, lots of great concern is the fact that the government and the department dragged the chain for so long. We called for a ventilation audit three months ago. The New South Wales government audited ventilation in every classroom across the state, but the teachers' union believe this was not properly done. It also believes it should follow Victoria's lead, where the state government there has purchased 51,000 air purifiers for classrooms. The government has advised that they've now procured or in the process of procuring approximately 20,000 uh, air purifiers. That comes following call after call after call made upon the government to do so after the Victorian government had made an announcement weeks ago. But Professor Sharon Goldfeld from the Murdoch Children's Institute says there's no reason for parents to be concerned. There's huge amounts that are being done and I think there's a lot of thought being given into this idea of what we're calling layered mitigation strategies. So rather than suggesting there's just one thing we do and that's the silver bullet and we don't do anything else, there's a recognition that we probably need to do a number of those things. In New South Wales today, 16 schools were closed due to COVID cases. Angelo Gavrilatos warns there could be more disruption as students return. I don't think it's fully appreciated the impact of cases on schools. Only yesterday we had 15 cases of COVID that impacted our schools, 15 different schools. And with each case on a school, literally hundreds of others, students and teachers and staff members may be equally uh, impacted if they're deemed close contacts. Every step of the way, particularly over the last few weeks of the return to school, you know, the union's been telling us all the reasons why we can't be back, which I think is actually completely out of line with what the frontline teaching staff are telling us and how excited students and parents are to be back at school. Experience overseas suggests cases will emerge in schools. In the UK, schools were a major source of infection. As face-to-face -face learning resumed, over 100,000 students had COVID within two weeks. But in San Francisco, where masks and teacher vaccination is mandatory, COVID cases amongst children hardly rose. And in Singapore, there have been some cases in school, but they've been contained without leading to serious outbreaks. But in Scotland, where 85% of over 12s are vaccinated, cases in schools rose initially, but have fallen. 
I don't think we could sit here and say, don't worry, there won't be any increase in cases in children. I think we're all pretty convinced that there will be. Professor Goldfeld says unlike the UK or the US, Australia is well placed to limit cases arising from schools. I think our community vaccination rates are pretty good and that's, that should be a great reassurance to us. The most important thing in Australia is we're not seeing kids really getting very sick and ending up in hospital. In New South Wales, over 90% of teachers are vaccinated. Professor Goldfeld believes with high vaccination coverage, rules about close contacts can be changed to minimise disruption when cases are detected in schools. I think the only place that we're left now is how to handle when there is a child with COVID in the school and how the school responds and sort of what the public health response is. And I think that's being worked through. It's a lot to consider. But for Mandy and Liam, for them, the excitement of school returning far outweighs their fears of infection. As a mother, I'm trying to downplay that, you know, be careful, be careful, um, and just sort of, you know, we'll ease our way back into it and um, deal with what we... If we've learned anything out of this time, it's that we can deal with big problems. Diesel, stop it.